Hey, this is Math 2, Unit 6, worksheet number 2, called Proving Triangles Similar. Determine if the triangles are similar, and then complete the statement of similarity, and then state the postulate or theorem that justifies the similarity. If they're not, just say not. All right, so here we have A, B, and C, and you want to see what that one is going to be similar to. So in our situation here, what we're looking at is we could say that here's our big one, A, B, and C. That's our triangle. And then inside of that, because these are two parallel lines, okay, then we also can say that this one is going to be similar to it as well. And that triangle there, going the same order, is D, E, C. And we would call that similar because of the angle, angle similarity postulate there. Okay, looking at, let's look at number two real quick here. We have P, Q, R, P and Q and R. PQR, and then we also have, want that equal to something else. Well, we know those angles are going to match up there, okay? Because we have some side links here, we have 6 to 8, 9 to 12. Notice here that 6 to 8 can reduce down to 2 goes in there 3 times, 2 goes in there 4 times. Compare that to 9 to 12. 3 goes in here 3 times, and 3 goes in there 4 times. So I can see they have the same scale factor go from 6 to 8 as I go from 9 to 12. This also means that that side corresponds to that side there, or similar to it, and this one's going to be similar to that one there. I'm not saying they're equal. I know those little hash lines usually mean they're equal. We're just three now, just saying they're similar. And if that's the case, then we could say that x, q, z, x, q, z, again going q in the middle, is similar to that one. And the reason for that is because I have a side angle side, right, similarity there. Looking at number three, here I have five to 10, four to eight, right? That is times two, this is times two, but seven times two is not 15, meaning that is not a similar, it's not a congruent, it's not a similar triangle. So we would say it's not <laughs> similar and not similar and leave it right there at that. Let's take a look at number five down below. <coughs> we have a triangle inside of a larger triangle perhaps okay and so with this triangle what we can see is that I have P Q R this one right here okay P Q R they want to say is similar to something else well to be similar I notice that I have my hypotenuse is and this in the little one is SR. Notice that this guy here, I have the short leg. This one matches the short leg. Okay. I have my hypotenuse, which is one across the right angle there, and I cross the right angle there. And then I also have my tall leg, which is this one, which matches this one. So in terms of what that triangle looks like, there's two of them, right? This goes PQ on the red line, and then R. So I want to go R to Q. And then what's left? S. And the reason that's going to work is I have an angle, right? And I have an angle. And I have another angle right there with the 90 degrees. And so there's an angle angle um, similarity there. Let's take a look at the back page. All right, number seven. It says a man is standing uh, next to a tree, a six foot tall man standing next to a tree, and there's a shadow that's four feet long. At the same time, you have a tree, and the tree has a shadow that's 10 feet long. How tall is the tree? And so the way we set this up is as a proportion. We can say 6 is to 4 as x is to 10. Okay, we can reduce first if we wanted to. It's up to you. It'd probably be a good idea. But if not, you do 60 equals 4x. Divide both sides by 4. All right. And we do that there. 60 divided by 4 equals 15. And so a height of the tree is 15, or 15 feet. Okay? Number nine. Victoria wants to find the height of a flagpole. Victoria is five feet tall. The flagpole's shadow is 70 feet long, and her shadow is 12 feet long. Find the height of the flagpole. Again, same idea. We're going to do five is to 12, as I don't know, x is to 70. We can cross multiply here and do 70 times 5. Whoops, 70 times 5, yep, yeah, which is 350 
equals 12x. We'll divide both sides by 12. And 350 divided by 12 is going to be a decimal answer. I end up with 29.16, a lot of sixes repeating there, um, feet. You could probably round that up to 29.12, or 29.2, sorry, but that's about it there. Kind of a crazy answer, but that's what I got. All right, looking down below, number 11. Explain why the triangles are similar here. Okay, well, I have an angle and an angle that are the same. I have a 90 degree angle that's the same as that 90 degree angle. So because of that, I could then say, well, because of the angle angle similarity kind of postulate, we're gonna say this is a similar triangle. Because of that then, now I can take my short side here, seven, over my hypotenuse, x, and set that equal to my short side there, 21, over my hypotenuse x plus 4. Okay? I could set it up that way. That would work. I could also set it up this way. I could do short side, I could do a short side of the small triangle to short side of the bigger triangle and make that equal to the hypotenuse of the small one over the hypotenuse of the large one. I prefer this one because I can reduce 7 over 21 becomes 1 over 3. And now when I cross multiply, I end up with 3x equals x plus 4. I subtract x, subtract x, and I have 2x equals 4, divide by 2, and x equals 2. That's a lot easier in some ways than cross multiplying this way and this way, but you end up with the same answer. So it's up to you for what do you see and what do you want to do there. You just have to make sure your parts are matching on both sides of the equal sign. Okay? So that's what's key. Number 13. Same idea here, okay? In this case, we are gonna say that these are equal because I have an angle and an angle. That's gonna work out there. And I can see, do I have sides that are scale factor, right? Nine to 12. Well, nine to 12 reduces down, three goes in there and three goes in there. How about this one? I have 21 and 28. Seven goes in here three times and seven goes in there four times. Are the scale factors the same? Yes, they are. So because I have a side, an angle, and a side, I would say they're similar because of the side angle side theorem. Now to solve for that then, if I want to solve this, I can pick any one. I could do the 9 to 12, so my little one, and make that equal to this side over here, which is 18 over this side over here, 4x minus 4. Can I reduce that 9 to 12? I sure can. I could reduce it, or I could just use the scale factor, which is 3 four, same idea. Cross multiplying, I get 18 times four, which is 72 there, equals <laughs> three times four is 12x, and three times minus four is minus 12. So I just kind of skipped the step of distributing. I didn't skip it, but I distributed it right here. Let's add 12, add 12 to both sides. So we have 84 equals 12x, divide both sides by 12, and 84 divided by 12 is equal to seven. So our value of x is seven for number 13. All right, number 15, our last one here. It says the figure below contains three similar triangles. Label these three triangles with the correct um, vertices, side lengths, and angle measures using the information in the original figure. Okay, so our three triangles, we have the large one here, first of all. Then we have a medium size one, and then we have a small one right there. If you're not sure about that, again, here's what I have, right? So I have the large one, here's our large one, and we can label that as, we can see our right angle measurement is at B, okay? Our short leg goes B to A, and our long one comes out here to there. That's our A, B, C. Now over here, I can, I should probably put the labels that I have. What I also know about that is that A is at 56 degrees, C is 34 degrees, and that's my right angle. Got it. Now, looking at the medium size one, that's the one that goes in here. It's there, and there, and there. That's my medium size one. My medium one, I can look at the right angle, is here at D, and the short leg goes up to B, and the long leg goes out to a C. Okay, so that's that one right there. And I have a 90 degree measurement here. 
and I have again a 34 degrees there, which makes this one have to match that, which is 56 degrees. And then what's left then is this small one, which is here, and I have it located, drawn right there with peach. Okay, and there's my right angle in D. So D is still here. My short leg on this one happens to be A, and my long leg goes to B. All right, and my A angle measurement was again 56 degrees, which makes this still 34 degrees. So that's where the angle measurement's there. When I take a look at the side lengths, let's take a look at the side length of the yellow one. I have two plus eight, this whole thing right there is equal to 10, all right? Now on the short length A to D of the little one, I know that's two, and the length of the tall leg of this medium one is eight, so D to C is eight, all right? So I do have those measurements there, and it wants me to find out what X is gonna be, okay? X is the um, short leg of this guy. It wants me to find out what Y is gonna be, and Y is the hypotenuse of this one right there, okay? And that's what's asking me to find out, the X and the Y. Okay, so looking at what's happening from one to the other, we know that this, these are similar triangles, okay? And we have to figure out what the links are gonna be. Okay, so, um, yeah, label these three triangles, and there you go. Okay, so use two and four to complete, using two and four, using two and four, complete sentences explain in detail how you know the largest and middle sized triangles must be similar. Oh, using two to four sentences, okay. So the reason we know they're similar is because uh, they have, in our case here, they have two angles that are similar in all of these ones here. That's gonna help us there. So we could use the angle angle theorem to say that they're gonna be similar there. And whenever you have um, the, the two triangles that are gonna be similar here, then the other one must be as similar as well. So let you figure out how you wanna say that on your own, but they're gonna be similar because they have the same angle measurements all throughout. Okay, so let's take a look here. How do we solve for X? Well, how we solve for X is we're gonna take a look at, um, well, the way this works here. We're gonna do, <laughs> how do I do this here? I want to make sure I don't skip any parts for you guys. Sorry, I'm like on pause just for a second there. All right. Okay. So, yeah. Why? Oh, this is why. Y is here as well, right? Yep, so Y is there, and X is also here. Got it. Okay, so I just have some extra X's and Y's. All right, so X and Y. So I can say that for the X value, we can say that X on this one over eight, that to that, is equal to two over this value, X right there, right? Because they go together like so, okay? So to solve this here, then I end up with x squared equals 16. And so x becomes the square root of both sides, x equals four. So I can replace this with a four. I can replace this with a four, okay? And so now we have some values here for those ones. I have x equal to four. Now to solve for the y, y is gonna be the a, b value, which is here and here. So now that I know some other, um, some other values, I can do um, eight, whatever I want. I can do the long one, 10 over y equals this y over two, and that becomes 20 equals y squared. And I do the square root of 20. Well, 20 breaks up into four times five. Oh, I forgot the page here, sorry. Four times five. And the square root of four is two, and the square root of five is just five. And so y is gonna equal two root five. And that'll be my answer, okay? So you're gonna just set up some different proportions using what you have in the information here. So this becomes two root five. That means that's two root five as well. And that's two root five there. Actually, BC wouldn't be two root five. It'd be different, but we'll not worry about that one for now. Okay, that is it for today. Hope that helps you out a bit. See you next time.